The Department of Public Health and Human Services is pleased to bring you Aging Horizons. Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, Fraud, Legal Issues, Veterans Benefits and Caregiving. Aging Horizons is a program dedicated to inform and prepare Montanans on these timely issues, making a difference to you and your loved ones. Here now is today's program host. Hi everyone, today on Aging Horizons we've got a great show planned. We're going to be talking about winter driving. You know, it's going to be here sooner than we think. In fact, it's already cold. We might not have a bunch of snow on the ground, but this is the perfect time for us to get ready, make sure our vehicles are ready, make sure we're ready to drive in the winter driving. That is the safe way for us to be. So, we got lots of information. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. I think the most pleasant surprise when we turned 65 and signed up for Medicare Part B was finding out about our Welcome to Medicare preventive visit. It was free, and it gave us the opportunity to visit with our doctors and establish a plan for our health going forward. They reviewed our medical history, measured our height, weight, blood pressure, and counseled us on other risk factors. To learn more about Medicare's free or low-cost preventive and wellness benefits, call your local SHIP counselor at 800-551-3191. I mentioned it's free, right? Twice. This is Bill. He just received his new Medicare card and is following some simple rules to protect himself from fraud. He knows to never give out his Medicare, Social Security, or bank number over the phone. And this is Nancy. She knows that to detect any problems, she always reads her Medicare Summary Notice or Medicare Advantage EOB to make sure the billing is correct. Both Bill and Nancy know that anything suspicious can be reported to Montana SMP at 1-800-551-3191. Receiving help for Ella has been life-changing and the best word for it is relief. I was the therapist, I was the aide, and I couldn't be the mom because I, emotionally you're just to your wits end, you're trying to survive. I provide care for the Harrises, specifically their daughter Ella. Respite care is extremely challenging, but the rewards that you receive from it are a hundred times more than working with a child that doesn't have special needs. Once they get something, it's everything. It's a celebrate. You, ce you celebrate. You don't just enjoy those moments. You celebrate every moment that you get that you guided them to that next step. Respite. It's okay to need it. It's okay to want it. Will you provide it? Call 800-224-6034 or visit respite.mt.gov. It went from survival to enjoying life and being able to be a mom again. Brought to you by the Montana Broadcasters and this station. Hello everyone and welcome to Aging Horizons, brought to you by the Department of Public Health and Human Services. I'm your host, Kimmy Everman, and we're going to be talking about winter driving today almost time for us to be hitting the snow and the ice and all that and we need to be prepared uh, those vehicles need to be made ready for winter driving and we ourselves need to be ready we have a great guest today mike anderson so glad to have you back we always see you winter driving and distracted driving but you bring such great information glad to have you mike Thank you, I'm glad to be here. So let's talk first. Oh, and also, I, I just wanna let people know, you are a loss prevention specialist for the state of Montana. You work for the Department of Administration. I do. Um, so we wanna talk about preparation, first of all. Uh, you know, we, you and I have talked about winter driving many, many times, and that it's not brain surgery, and it's not a lot of changes, but you gotta be prepared. You have to be prepared. So tell us about that. Okay, first of all, you have to get your car prepared. And you can either do that yourself or you can take it to a shop. Uh, and there's several things they need to look at. They need to look at, make sure you have a good battery because batteries go bad in, in the cold weather. Um, it has to have antifreeze. Uh, you have, your belts need to be good. All the systems need to be working well. Uh, if you have a heater in that vehicle, that needs to be addressed, make sure it's working. Um, they also have battery heaters that you can put in vehicles. You don't see those much anymore, but they are available. Mm -hmm. But there's a whole process of getting ready. Uh, tires, another big issue. Got to make sure you have enough tread to get traction on the ice. You got to make sure that the air pressure is right. One thing that happens is people kind of forget about their tires. And when the temperature starts to get cold like it is now, it's early uh, November now, mm -hmm. Um, those the air pressure in your tires also go down. Oh. You see a lot of people driving around with half flat tires. Well, that's why because they didn't check 
the air pressure in those tires. So if you're going to do that, is your best bet to go to the dealership where you where you got that car, or just work with anybody who knows tires to get get them to the right um, tires or inflation? Tires are pretty easy. Okay. Um, the inflation is, there's a sticker right on, if you open your driver's door, uh, right on the post, there's a sticker there will tell you what size tires you should have oh. and what the pressure ought to be. Uh, anybody can check that, but you can take it to a dealer or a tire shop, or if you're having the entire vehicle checked, that's one of the things that they'll check for winter driving. Sure. So if you're doing the antifreeze and the different things to make mm -hmm. sure you're safe all winter, they can check the tires at the same time. Yes, absolutely. That sounds great. Well, what else? What else should we be doing? Um, so is there anything else about the car that we need to do? Well, if yes. I, just the tires. Uh, one of the issues uh, we have in the wintertime is condensation that gets into the gas tank. Oh. That's caused by difference in temperatures. Uh, let's say that you have a heated garage and it's 70 degrees in your garage and it's 20 below outside. That is a, as could happen. As could happen. <laughs> uh, that's a 90 degree difference in temperature. And so what happens when you drive your car from the cold weather into that warm weather, you can get condensation mm. inside the gas tank in that portion of the tank that has no fuel and then that water can get into your gas and then freeze. The best defense, keep your tank full, or keep it you know, between three quarters and full. Um, if, uh, if you can't do that for some reason, or if you're gonna take an extended trip, say in eastern Montana, sure, yeah, um, it's pretty good insurance you can get heat or dry gas, they call it. It's yeah, like that yellow bottle of heat mm -hmm. that you just pour in. Yep, one, one bottle treats mm -hmm. an entire tank. Uh, it uh, chemically uh, surrounds that water and, and doesn't allow it to freeze. And so a couple of bucks could be really good in, uh, insurance. Well, yeah, and I don't, you know, I'm not sure that I would think, oh gosh, I'm in this heated garage and this is going to happen as soon as I pull out. So thank you. Great right. information. Right. Um, all right, so we've got the tires, we've got the condensation. What else are we carrying in the car? Well, we also. Or doing with the car, I mean. I carry uh, an entire tote. Uh, I've got it here with me. Uh, it's it's quite large, and some of the things that I have in there is is this piece, um, which is uh, just a small kit that I threw together. This is an unused paint can. You can get these at any hardware store. Right. Uh, one thing I have in here is a candle. Right. This will last. This particular candle will last about two days. Will give you light and heat. Some of the other things in here obviously matches to light the candle, but I also carry some food, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you can carry these little bars, or mm -hmm. if you know that you're going on an extended trip, do some baking, mm -hmm. make some cookies, make some breads, take it with you. Uh, this is a chemical hand warmer. Mm -hmm. uh, these work really well. You manipulate it and mix the chemicals, it give you about six hours of heat. You can get a whole box of these for like six bucks, okay? So if you look at all of these things, I've also got a map in there of mm -hmm. the state of Montana. The, the biggest thing with this kit is this is probably the most important piece mm -hmm. because this can be used as a shovel if you don't have a shovel. But probably more importantly, if you're stranded, you can get out, put fresh snow in this, put your candle on your hot plate, and you can melt, you can melt that snow. Yeah. One thing I want to warn people on is do not drink the water cold. You have to be thinking about hypothermia all sure. the time. And so if you drink 40 or 50 degree water, that's going to lower wow. your core temperature. Sure. So make sure that you get it at least to room temp before you ingest it. Mike, these are, this is great, and it's a great start. We have a lot more to talk about because we're going to look at the other things in that tote. And folks, again, Preparation, thinking ahead, making sure that you have what you need in the car if there's an emergency. Um, you know, extra clothing, we're going to talk more about that. We're going to talk more about this paint can and how you, how you stay alive if you get into a situation that's dangerous and you don't quite know how to get out of it. So we have a lot more information from a real expert and we want you to stay with us. With as many as 1 in 10 Americans at risk for Alzheimer's or some other form of dementia, 
Chances are someone you know and love will receive that diagnosis. When that happens, you may well feel devastated, but know that you are not alone. Help is available. You don't have to face dementia by yourself. Call the free 24-7 Alzheimer's Association helpline, 800-272-3900, for guidance and support. It's been 27 years. I never thought I'd still be smoking, but here I am, COPD and all. I'm about to have a granddaughter. There's so much to show her, but I'm scared I won't be able to keep up like I used to. I kind of gave up on myself on quitting. But it's different now. I want to be here for her and for my daughter. When I stopped showing up, Jim showed up at my door. He took me to the hospital in town to get me help. That's the day Jim saved my life. Everyone has a role to play in preventing suicide. Know the signs and don't be afraid to speak up. If someone you know is in crisis or emotional distress, the only wrong thing to say is nothing at all. Call 800-273-TALK or text MT to 741-741. Every generation produces heroes. Men and women who step forward to defend our country in time of need, no matter the personal cost to themselves. And though we can never fully repay them, we can make sure they have access to low-cost, long-term care when they need it. That's what Montana's Veterans Homes are all about. If you've got a hero in need in your family, call us. We can help. Hi folks, welcome back to Aging Horizons. We're here with Mike Anderson today talking about winter driving and just getting prepared for that. We're coming into the winter season here in Montana. You know, it, you can expect um, snow and sleet and ice and this is some great resources and information for you to be prepared for the driving through that. Mike, glad to have you as always. Thank you. Um, so we talked a bit about you had a, a empty paint can with lots of great ideas a candle, some food warmers, matches. Mat. Um, but you've got another another little kit that you carry also that I think is interesting. Can we talk about that? Absolutely. Uh, I put this kit together, and uh, you can buy these at the box stores mm -hmm. for anywhere from about ten dollars to fifty dollars, depending on how complicated of a kit you want to get. Uh, first thing I have in here is work gloves. Um, the reason I carry these is when I'm out working on the car, these are very thin. These are not warm gloves, uh, and, but I don't want them to be warm. Mm -hmm. I, want them, I want to be able to have the dexterity. Right. And if you look, the inside palm area is sticky. Mm -hmm. Even when it's wet, I can hold on to a oh. tool. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I don't want to use my good winter gloves mm -hmm. when I'm out uh, working on the car. If I'm and you can probably a, find those like at the hardware store or something, yes, right? Okay. Absolutely. Okay. And so these are for a different purpose than staying warm. Right. I've got uh, in here uh, jumper cables in case the battery were to die. Um, I've got lights, warning lights. Oh, uh, these are LED, uh, and so they have a red. Uh, portion you can also use it as a flashlight or you can get it to blink you want to this has a magnet on the back you can actually put this on the back of your car wow and I would recommend they actually sell the they have better ones now that are round mm -hmm. and they come in a six-pack mm. and so you can put a couple on oh, your car yeah, yeah. and yeah. then you can set them back away from and your car. And they stick up in places. Yes, yeah. they got magnets, mm -hmm. they got hangers on them, mm -hmm. um, you yep. know, yep. and the whole purpose is to get other people's attention so that they don't hit you. Yeah. Uh, some of the other things I have in here are just some basic tools, some screwdrivers. Now these are not the same quality that I have in my shop, but they don't need to be. Right. You know. Right. It's for an emergency it's, only. It's for an emergency. Right. I've got a couple of pair of pliers. Um, you know, uh, channel locks and regular pliers. I've got an adjustable wrench, uh, you know, which is metric also. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, and I threw together this kit. This is a bungee cord, black tape, and a roll of wire. Now, most people that grew up in Montana, this is a fix-all kit, 
<laughs> right? I can build a rocket with this. Yes, you can. Yeah. And so <laughs> we're good that way. It amazes me mm -hmm. with just a little bit of knowledge and just some basic tools. It amazes me how just about anybody can get their car back on the road or at least enough to get back to town. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I carry just a real basic toolkit with me. That, yeah, because it isn't like you're trying to fix your car on the side of the road. You're trying to get safe. You're trying to get safe. You're trying to get back to town. And, yep. and you're trying not to be out in the winter uh, elements and such that are going to be quite dangerous. Yes. And let's talk about that for just a minute. I, I'd like to know how you feel about this, Mike. What if you do break down and you're in the car and you, ha you can't get it? going again should you leave the car should you go walk someplace should you stay with the car what what's the best um winter uh i guess behavior for that kind of a thing okay if you find yourself stranded mm -hmm. whether the car is still running or not do not leave that vehicle okay, okay? i was a professional firefighter for 24 years and did a lot of rescues and so i will tell you if you get out of that vehicle and try to walk to the house that was a quarter mile back, it's not a quarter mile back. It's five miles, and you're probably not going to make it, okay? I'm going to have a very, very hard time finding you in the ditch, but I'll find your car. Yeah. So stay in your car. It provides you shelter, right. and it provides you warmth. Right. Okay? And you have all of this stuff with you, and if you have some food, you can stay there for an extended period of time. Well, and I want to also mention again, you talked about keeping a full tank of gas. And I know, um, it, especially the newer cars always suggest that now, that you either keep yes. a quarter or full. And I, I guess I one of my things for winter is always to have a full tank where, wherever I go. Because mm -hmm. I'm always thinking, gosh, I wonder... What if I have to run this car for a while because I'm stuck someplace? Yeah, and if you are stuck, I want you to run your car no more than 15 minutes an hour. Okay. Okay. The windows now, down or what, what are we doing here? I want the driver's window down three to four inches. The reason is uh, if the exhaust comes back around and gets in the car, I want that window open so that you can refresh the air right. inside the car. Right. But also I want that window down so you can hear other oncoming cars. Mm -hmm. So that if you hear somebody coming, you can get out, you can turn your headlights on, you can honk your horn, because you want to get somebody else's attention. Right, and, and not just sit there all night hoping against hope that your car will start up. Anything right. else in that bucket that we need to look at? <laughs> well, there's all kinds of things in here that I carry. Uh, I got a, a shovel. This, uh, it folds up, but I can, I can put the handle out like that. Uh, I've got another one at home that this handle actually comes out, and there's a, there's a saw in there, about a seven-inch hey, saw. Hey, that's a sweet little deal. Yeah, <laughs> and so what I can do with the saw is I can, I can cut off limbs for traction to put under my tires, or I can cut off limbs to start a fire. Wow. Uh, I can cut down an entire tree if I need to with that. And a red shovel is all it takes. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, we have a whole, a whole lot more to tell you about what's in that bin, etc. But what we're trying to encourage you today is to think about proactive steps you need to take to be safe for driver, er, driving in the wintertime. You never know when you might slide, when the car might stop, when there might be a deer in front of you. Um, it might be rainy, snow nighttime there's all these variables and you want to be prepared for as many of those variables as you can um, stay with us we have some more to tell you and more in the bucket I was diagnosed with diabetes in 1992 and I went into denial it made me angry I was a professional chef and it, I didn't want to change my eating style it took me a long time to get serious about managing my health my perspective changed from resentment to one of loving my body, the container for my spirit. Getting help from my diabetes educator supported my goals of improved self-care. I want to feel good and have a great life. My diabetes educator helps me do this. If the Aging Network in Montana was a restaurant, the sign out front would say over 50 million meals served over the last 30 years. Since adequate nutrition is critical to health and quality of life, Nutrition services are an important factor in keeping older Montanans healthy, independent, and living in their community and home. To find out more about senior nutrition programs in your area, call 1-800-551-3191.
In 20 years at an electric utility, I've seen the hardships many of our neighbors face with high winter heating bills. Ross Holter, Flathead Electric Co-op. That's why I donate to Energy Share of Montana. I just hate the thought of senior citizens, and young kids especially, being cold in the winter. Donate to Energy Share. Help your neighbor stay warm. To donate, call 888-779-7589 or go to energysharemt.com. Energy Share, you can help your neighbor stay warm. Did you just text me? I didn't want to disturb you if you were sleeping. Sleeping? I'm sitting right next to you, silly. There you are. Hey, I found a couple of Medicare helping programs online that I think we ought to look into. Hmm. It says if we qualify, we can get help paying for our prescription drugs. Oh, and there's a program that can help pay our Part B premium. To learn more about extra help and Medicare savings programs, call your local SHIP counselor today. Maybe I better text him. Hi, folks. Welcome back to Aging Horizons. We're here with Mike Anderson talking about winter driving today and encouraging folks to really get prepared for that um, so that if something happens that you don't expect, that you've got some kinds of tools uh, to help you make it through that situation. And Mike, you know, you pull out a tool here that I gotta hear about. Now you called this the <laughs> five in one tool and, and, and you carry this with you. Tell us about that. I do, this is a five in one tool. It's basically just a big hunk of plastic <laughs> that, that somebody uh, formed and they're probably making uh, quite a bit of money a on it. A kajillion dollars. Of yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. It, it, it works as a window scraper. It works, uh, these are open, so it works as a shovel. Uh, you can drive on top of it to get out of a stuck. sticky spot. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're changing a tire, you can put this under the tire and lift it so that you can push the tire onto the studs. Uh, and the fifth thing is you can take the plug out of the back and you can put this over the lug wrench. Now, I don't know if you've ever tried to change a tire on yeah. one of these new cars. Oh, they give you a lug wrench that's yeah. about this long. <laughs> well, this you can put over the top of that, and then you have another 18 inches <gasps> of leverage. Oh, what a great idea. Yeah. So somebody came up with a great idea. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and I saw it on the Internet, and I had to have it. Okay. So I, <laughs> I, well, I it doesn't one. take a lot to entertain us. That's all I can say. <laughs> okay, and then you also have a blanket, and let's again talk about we're not trying to keep warm here, right? Right. This is not to stay warm. This is to stay dry. Remember we talked about earlier in the show, we talked about hypothermia. Mm -hmm. We talked about staying dry. Today I'm wearing blue jeans. If I get those blue jeans wet, the, the cold is just going to wick the heat right out of my body. So I want to stay dry. So if I'm going to be out putting on tire chains or changing a tire, I'm going to put a blanket down over the snow so then sure, to keep I, the yeah. so I stay dry. Right. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it, it makes perfect sense. And then, um, as we talked about the last segment, staying warm means staying with your vehicle. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And not not wandering off to see if there's anything else. Like right. you said, that that house you thought was a half a mile back is going to be five miles. It is. And you're so, not going to make it. Exactly. Which is a sad thing to say. Yeah. But uh, another thing that's very important, if you're by yourself, if you're stranded by yourself, fight to stay awake. Because the harsh reality is you might not wake up if you go to sleep. In the cold, yeah. That's In the true. cold. And, yeah. and I hate to say that, and it seems harsh, but fight to stay awake. Well, and, and you Very know, important. I guess just some other things, little things we haven't talked about. Make sure your cell phone is completely... Yes. Um, uh, and and bring a charger. Yes, and bring a charger. Bring and a charger. And it's charged bring any leave. any medications that you might be on. How many times have we heard that on the news that somebody has gone missing and they need their medication? Mm -hmm. um, uh, you take uh, food. Take your warm clothes. Uh, ladies, take snow boots. Right? There's nothing worse than being in a snowbank with high heels on. You are <laughs> right about that, Mike. And years ago, I started carrying a pair of boots in my car. For that very reason, I was exactly. afraid I would be caught someplace in high yep. heels. Take gloves, scarf, hat, everything that you need. Because, as you said earlier, maybe your car's not running. Right. You know, And so there is no heat other than what you have with, with you, which right. is a candle and blankets. Right. You might have to survive on that. Now, we've talked about preparing your car. Mm -hmm. We've talked about kind of preparing yourself mentally. Right. And we've talked about things that you should have with you. But you should also go out and practice 
driving. Yeah. You know? Good idea. Once a year. Uh, even even those of us that are up in a age, uh, you know, we've got a lot of years. I need it more than anybody. <laughs> we've got a lot of experience driving. Yeah. But every fall, once we get that snow on the ground, once we get some ice, we should go out and practice mm -hmm. because everybody's car feels just a little bit different bef just before it goes out of control. Mm -hmm. You should figure out what that feels like in your car. Right. And then you should push yourself out of control in a safe environment right. and then teach yourself how to correct from that skid. Well, and you can always look to, uh, you know, AARP does driving classes, mm -hmm. winter driving classes. Um, other sort of local community entities might be doing some classes that you could just, for a Saturday afternoon, go over for a couple of hours and do that practicing right. and see how that feels. Um, yeah, because if you've never been in a situation where you're sliding, sometimes your instincts are not going to serve you very well right. because you got to talk about if you slide what you should if do. If you get in a slide, first thing you want to do, take your foot off the gas. Okay. okay. Second thing and the hardest thing to do. Don't put your foot on the brake. Don't hit the brake. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Okay. If you hit the brake in that situation, the car is going to go wherever it wants to go. You have lost control. So no pedals, no gas, no brake. Look at where you want to be and then steer to get there. Okay. Okay? Yep. So what I mean by that is if you're going down the road like this and all of a sudden you're sideways, look at where you want to be and turn the wheel to and get steer there. And in, steer into okay? that. Yeah. But skid recovery is a learned skill. Mm -hmm. It is. And so you're not just going to pick that up instantly right. when you need it. Right. You have to go out and practice that. Right. And I think also, that, you know, what goes along with that is something that, that uh, you know, speeding has been my bane for many years, and you need to slow down. Yes. And just take it easy, remembering that getting there five seconds earlier <laughs> is not... Is not worth it. It's not. It's not worth the danger. Right. You know, Mike, it's always so great to have you. Love talking about winter driving with you. So you bring us lots of good information, and I'm going to pack my deal up. I know that for sure. Okay. And I do keep it in my car every winter. So really glad that you were able to be with us here today, Mike. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. I really appreciate it. Sure. And folks, this is just preparation. It's like anything you do in life. Be prepared. Think ahead. Try to imagine what might happen if you did get stuck someplace. What would you need? How would you need to be safe and what would you need to get yourself to a place that of safety and of warmth and all that you want when you're out driving in the winter time? So keep your cell phone charged, lots of gas in the car, slow down, have everything you need in your bucket, and come back next time to Aging Horizons. Special thanks to the Department of Public Health and Human Services for their continued support. Hosts on Aging Horizons are program specialists at the Montana Office on Aging. Production facilities provided by Video Express Productions. For more information about Aging Horizons, call the Department of Public Health and Human Services toll-free at 800-332-2272.